Seems like the question now is, when are we going to move on? And that's where we begin tonight with a frequent guest, Dr. Human Norchasm, an immunologist and public health advocate. All right, doctor, am I right or am I missing something here? How are you, Joe? Thanks for having me again. Um, you know, Joe, I, I was listening to, to your monologue here, and it's just really truly an American tragedy. I mean, um, the bottom line is that uh, both our democracy as well as our public health policy has fallen away from the science of immunology, and that's fundamentally what's going on here. I think the vast majority of Americans don't have a good grasp of what IgG antibodies and prime T cells do for a transient virus like coronavirus. And I think, frankly, our public health officials have stoked this mistrust by really, you know, forcing these draconian mandates on people, particularly in a setting where somewhere around 80 to 100 million Americans are already naturally immune. And, and the, the preponderance of evidence, as you and I have talked about before, is demonstrating that these folks are equally protected as are fully vaccinated people. So the fact that, you know, this large number of people who, um, you know, on a rational basis actually don't want to get vaccinated and are being forced is really causing a lot of mistrust in government. Sure. So, but I think fundamentally my diagnosis is that, is that we're, we, you know, we're, we're walking away from science, from an American science, both our democracy as well as our public health officials. Yeah, I guess the thing we've talked about as well here on the broadcast is this, the mixed messaging. And, I, and again, people really at this point, I'm not sure they know what to think anymore. There have been so many messages, but the outlier really is the schools, doctor. And it's a complicated issue, yeah. there's no doubt, from masks to quarantining and beyond. Yeah, look, you know, uh, I think, I think uh, it's a safe bet that, as, as, as I said, as our furnaces come on this fall and winter, as people m go into more populated, um, you know, cloistered environments, mm -hmm. that this, th there's going to be surges all around the country in, in areas where people are unimmune. Now, schools in particular, are, I think, are, are at, at high risk because most of the kids are not vaccinated. Right. Most of the kids are not immune. And, and, you know, some of the teachers aren't either. So, you know, I think that we have to be, we should be concerned about those areas. And even though the risk is lower to kids, it's still present. I mean, there have certainly been kids who've actually suffered some very serious complications from um, the natural infection. Right. Um, that's not to ignore the, the incidence of uh, complications from the virus itself, from the vaccine itself, but the virus, without a question, is going to have uh, a higher risk profile to right. on a per and, person basis. And then we're going to get into this all again, doctor, when and if Pfizer gets the approval for 5 to 11 year olds. I can see this touching off another divisive debate. I mean, there are parents who can't even agree on whether the kids should wear a mask. Uh, look, look, Joe, I think when it comes to kids, there, there are two things that are for sure. We should not be vaccinating kids who are already immune. That's, that should be a hard stop. Any kid who's had COVID should not be a candidate for getting this vaccine. Number two is, and look, I have six kids myself. Five, you know, four of them have gotten vaccinated because they're eligible. One of them had natural immunity, did not get it. And, and really, the, the two parameters that are really important with the kids is, number one, the ones who are immune already should not be getting vaccinated. And I think that should be a federal policy. I think it's a mistake if, if our FDA and CDC do not go down that path. Number two is this interval of three weeks between the first and second shot is, is frankly unprecedented. I mean, we, we have no other vaccine that has, has three week intervals. And, and I think it's a, it's, it was just randomly picked because they wanted to sort of speedily uh, vaccinate everybody. I myself with my own kids have waited about eight to 10 weeks. And I can tell you both, you know, in, in the case of uh, both the kids who got it at eight weeks and 10 weeks, I measured their antibodies. They have very robust antibody responses. They're fully immune. Mm -hmm. so, so this idea of, you know, vaccinating kids at a three week interval, I think it's a dangerous idea. Idea. I think the, the idea of vaccinating kids who are who are already immune because they've had COVID is a, is a dangerous idea. We should step away from it. And I, you know, I, I hope that this message is delivered to the President of the United States. I think that it's not a bad idea to have the vaccine available to kids who are unimmune, but we should not be vaccinating kids who are uh, okay. already immune. Uh, we certainly should not be uh, doing it at a three week interval. Doctor, I want to get you on one more thing. You probably saw Joe Rogan grilled CNN's Dr. Sanjay Gupta over the network's <laughs> coverage of him saying that Rogan had used a horse dewormer to treat COVID. Here's a clip. We'll get your comment after. Get it's that. a lie. It's a lie on a news network, it, and it's a lie that's a willing, that's, that's a lie that they're conscious of. It's not a mistake. Yeah. They're unfavorably framing it as veterinary medicine. Well, the FDA put this thing out. You saw that. Did you see that thing that the FDA put out? What did the FDA put out? <laughs> it was a tweet, and it was snarky. I admit it. They said, you are not a horse, you are not a cow. Stop taking this stuff or something like Why that. Why would you say that when you're talking about a drug that's been given out to billions and billions of people? But don't you think that a lie like that is dangerous on a news network when you know that they know they're lying? 
So Dr. Rogan's beef was that CNN said he took a horse dewormer, and he actually had taken a human form of ivermectin, and it was prescribed by a doctor. But the FDA's comment is that they don't recommend this for COVID. Do you agree with that? Well, yeah, look, so first of all, I, th I think uh, Rogan was, was quite appropriate in his criticism of CNN. I think CNN's done a lot to erode trust in itself by just parroting out establishment narratives and really blunting out the dissenting voices. You know, look, I, I think that, I, I, you know, one, of the, one thing is, is for sure is that we are behind on treatments. I mean, really, the only treatments that we've focused on developing in our country um, are, are treatments that are, you know, sort of money drugs, if you will, you know, be it remdesivir or this new drug that's out or the monoclonal antibodies. We, we really have, foc have to focus on anti-inflammatory treatment. You know, COVID is fundamentally an, an inflammatory disease caused by T cells and macrophages. We have some very, very seminal generic drugs out there. You know, one, one that I and my colleagues worked on early on in the pandemic is called cyclosporin. And it's very, you know, it's a, it's a targeted sure. drug that really hits the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the cells that are uh, active in this disease. Now, here's the thing with ivermectin. I, you know, I do hope that, that, that it works. I, I'm not convinced 100% myself that this is the right drug. Now, just because a Nobel Prize was based on it, right. just because, you know, a billion people have taken it, you know, most people get better. You know, Joe got better. Joe Rogan got better. I, I'm, I'm glad he did. You know, uh, but, but again, anecdotes and sort of, you know, popularity contests are not what make for effective drugs. Mm -hmm. Certainly, ivermectin, I don't see a mechanistic uh, path for it to work. I know it has been shown to show some antiviral, um, uh, you know, uh, mechanisms for, for COVID. But again, I, I, you know, we, the, the jury's out. We just haven't worked right. uh, diligently enough on developing treatment. Well, treatments we should make, country, make so. clear, though, while we, there is an animal version and there is a human version, do not take the animal version. That's for sure. Dr. Right. Human Norchasm, <laughs> physician, right. public health advocate. It's good to see you again, doctor. Thanks for the time.